My sermon this morning is going to begin over in 2 Corinthians, chapter 13 and in verse 9. I'm going to read from the outline now. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong, and this also we pray, that you may be made complete. In the same chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, when you drop down to verse 11, he says, Finally, brethren, farewell, become complete. Be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. What I want you to see here are the two things I've underlined for you here from the 13th chapter of 2 Corinthians. The first one is that you may be made complete, and then the second one is become complete. Now, the idea of becoming complete and things being complete is taken from these three Greek words. The first one is teleos. It signifies having reached its end, finished, complete, perfect. Or artios is translated perfect and also complete. And then tell you to bring to an end by completing or perfecting. And so the idea of this particular word becoming complete is the idea of something missing. And you're not complete. So you need to complete it to where it's all there. Uh, you find the same concept over in Matthew chapter 19. And again, I'm going to read uh, from the outline. It says, the young man said to him, all these things I have kept from my youth. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go and sell what you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. Now, all I really want to get from this particular text right now is the question the young man said, and that is, what do I still lack? And so something's missing. You're not complete. And so Jesus says, if you want to be perfect, that's from the New King James, but when you go to the same text uh, in the New American Standard Version, he says, if you wish to be complete. All I'm trying to show you is the word perfect is the concept of the idea of complete. And the opposite of complete is something's missing, something's lacking. And so we're working toward becoming complete. And that's what we're going to study this morning. How do we become complete? And so the first question you need to ask yourself in your relationship with God is this. What's missing? What's missing in me and my relationship with my God and my Creator? This time is going over to Colossians chapter 2 and in verse 10. He says, And you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. What I want you to see from this one verse right now is a simple concept. The way in which we become complete is by being in him, by being in Christ. Putting it another way, if you're not in Christ, something big is missing in your life. Because it is only through Christ and by being in Christ that you can be reconciled to God. And so I put it to you another way. If you haven't got Jesus in your life, you haven't got it at all. I don't care what kind of stuff you got. I don't care how healthy you are. If you ain't got Jesus, you ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. Because for us to be complete as people, we have to be right with God. And the only way we can be right with God is by being in Christ. You find the same thing again in Colossians chapter 1, this time verse 28. Going back to the outline. Him we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. And so again, this is the New King James translation. He talks about how every man is able to become perfect. Perfect, and again, this is complete in Christ Jesus. Let me show you the same verse again from another translation, from the New American Standard Translation. The New King James says, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. The New American Standard says, so that we may present every man complete in Christ. All right, all I'm trying to show you, perfect, complete, same concept. So when you think of complete, remember the very beginning, something's missing, something's lacking. It's not on the sermon outline, but John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man shall come unto the Father except through me. If you're not going to God through Jesus, 
You're not going. Because it's the only way. The only way we can be reconciled to God is through Jesus Christ. The only way we can be saved is through Jesus Christ. You need to recognize that. And if you haven't got the Lord in your life, the biggest thing in your life is missing. And you will never be complete until you finally find your way to God through Jesus Christ. Going back to Galatians now, chapter 3, 26 to 27, you all know the verse. For you're all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. We call this often obeying the gospel. This is how you get into Christ. It starts off faith. You have to recognize who he is. Absolutely crucial to everything. You need to recognize Jesus actually is truly the Christ he really is the Son of God. A virgin birth did take place, and Jesus is that individual. He's the man born of the Virgin Mary. He's the Christ. Be willing to openly confess that faith and repent by that faith, and then be baptized into Christ. Put it another way. If you don't obey the gospel, you're lost. That's as simple as I can make it. You're not complete without Christ, and the only way you can get into Christ is by obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right. How do you get there, though? How do you get to this point of faith and obeying the gospel? 2 Timothy is where I'm going to take you now, chapter 3, 16 through 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now look at the last part in verse 17. The man of God may be what? The next word? Complete. Thoroughly equipped for every good work. All scripture comes from God Almighty. Every individual who comes to the point of having faith comes to that faith through the word of God. You hear about the virgin birth, you read about the virgin birth. You hear about the miracles Jesus did, or you read about the miracles Jesus did. You read about the prophecies that Christ fulfilled in his birth, in his ministry, in his burial, in his resurrection and ascension. And from the miracles, from the eyewitnesses of his resurrection, from the fulfillment of the prophecies, I come to the conclusion somebody I've never seen is the Christ. And it is from the word of God I learn about the gospel of God, about the necessity of me coming to the point of having faith, the necessity of me confessing my faith, the necessity of me repenting by faith, the necessity of me by faith being baptized into Christ and then living by faith. And I understand from the word of God exactly what the will of God is. There's two things we get from the scriptures, faith and the knowledge of the will and word of God. You put the two together, you by faith obey his will, and in a nutshell, that's what Christians are and do. We all get this knowledge from the scriptures, so we are thoroughly equipped. Everything we need to get us to where God wants us to be is through the scriptures. I told you earlier, if you don't go through Jesus, you don't go. I'll put it another way. If you don't go through the scriptures, you don't go. If you don't go through the truth of God's scriptures and inspired word of God, you're not going to make it. You're lacking something. You can get all of the books out there in the world. They're not going to fulfill what's missing. What's missing in people's lives is faith, obedience to the gospel, and doing God's will by faith. And you're not going to get there without the scriptures of the word of God. That's why you find in Colossians chapter 4 and verse 12. Oh, missed it. Go back to it. I'm not going to get that. Stop touching it, Wayne. I'm lost. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I still don't know how to navigate this sometime. Colossians chapter 4, verse 12. Epaphras, who is one of you, a bondservant of Christ, greets you always laboring fervently for you in prayers. Look at this now. That you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. How do you know the will of God? From the scripture. Whenever you're doing the will of God, you're standing perfect, you're standing complete, and you're standing complete in all the will of God. So, for us to be complete, first of all, 
It has to be in Christ. Second of all, it has to be through the Scriptures producing the faith and the knowledge of the will of God that you then by faith obey. That's not hard to see, is it? Christians follow Christ. We follow the will of God by faith. And when we're doing that, we're complete. Now, let's go to faith. 1 Thessalonians now, chapter 3, verse 10. Night and day, praying exceedingly, that we may see your face and perfect what is lacking in your faith. All right. We've talked about how faith is what gives you access to the grace of God. We come to faith by the knowledge of the Word of God. We come to understand what the will of God by our faith. But the text here talks about our faith needing to be completed, perfecting what is lacking in your faith. So what is exactly lacking in our faith that needs to be completed to where we have the kind of faith God wants us to have? James chapter 2, verse 22. Do you not see that faith was working together with his works? Now look at the last part of this. And by works, faith was made perfect. Okay. You have the faith. You have the knowledge of the will of God. Now I'm going to ask you a simple question. If you're not doing the will of God, is your faith complete? <laughs> no, it's not, is it? You got to do it. You got to obey. And by works, faith is made complete. The works that we are doing are the works of faith. We're just simply doing what God says do by faith. Let me show you the same verse in a different translation. Here's the New King James, but let me give you the New American Standard Version, or the ESV this time. You see, the faith was active along with his works. Faith was completed by his works. Again, I'm showing you the same thing I've already shown you three or four times. The concept of perfecting is the idea of completing. If you want your faith to be a complete faith, you've got to obey the will of God by faith. If you're not doing what God says do, what's the prize? Your faith is not complete. You're missing something here in your life as a Christian, and that is you're not doing what God says do. You need to do it by faith. When you're doing it by faith, then it's complete. But if you're not doing it, it's kind of hanging out there by itself. Faith without works is dead, being alone. you got to have the obedience of faith for it to be complete. And I'll go into Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 20 to 21. Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, now look at this, make you complete, how? In every good work to do his will. You see that? You're doing his will. You're doing it by faith. And when you're doing his will by faith, you are made complete. The faith is finally complete. And he finally says, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. How is it that God works in us? He works in us when we by faith obey his will. There it is. Christianity is not a deep mystical religion, folks. It's really quite straightforward and simple. You have access to God through Jesus Christ. Your faith comes from the Word of God. Your knowledge of the will of God comes from the, will of, from the Word of God. And then when you, by faith, obey the will of God, God is working through you and you are now complete. Your faith is complete. Now going to James chapter 1, verses 3 through 4 this time. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking Nothing. All right. What else do we need for our faith to be complete? Patience. I have some bad news for you. There's only one way you're going to get patience in your life as a Christian. Sorry, but this is the only way. you got to suffer. you got to go through some very terrible things in your life. And people around you that you love and yourself you're going to go through some extremely difficult times. 
when you're going through those difficult times, the crucial thing is that we hold on to our faith and do not start doubting God and turn from God because of how difficult our life is going or the lives of people that we love. That's what the text is talking about, various trials, Various is the idea. There's all kinds of different trials. Some of them are physical. Some of them are financial. Some of them are emotional. Various trials. But you've got to go through it with your faith intact. Because if your faith remains intact on the other side of it, you've got patience. And look at this again. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be complete perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So your faith to be complete, it has to be an obedient faith, doing the will of God by faith. And then when you go through the trials in life, you do not stop trusting in the Lord, but you just keep going forward in your faith and your trust. And on the other side of that trial, your faith is strengthened. Now you have patience. Let me show you some other verses on this. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 10 this time. Hebrews 2 and 10 says, for it was fitting for him, for, for, for whom are all things and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons to glory, look at this now, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Who's this talking about here? It's talking about Jesus. For Jesus to be complete, for our captain to be made complete and perfect, the only way he could be complete and perfect was for himself to go through sufferings and be faithful to God all the way to the point of the death of the cross. You see how that worked with Jesus? If our captain had to be complete through sufferings, what about us? No difference. We have to go through suffering for us to be complete in our faith, for it to produce the patience. Now let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, look at this now, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. I, I, different times in my life, I said, Linda, you've been praying for patience lately? That's, that's actually happened. Uh, usually when that's happening, we're going through an extremely difficult time. Because I'm realizing, okay, this is one of those moments where my faith is being tested, where we're having a very difficult time, and so what I need to do is go to God in prayer and trust God is with me, that he will never leave me nor forsake me. He loves me. He's allowing me to go through this. Trust God regardless of how difficult the suffering may be. And when you do this, on the other side of it, he talks about the one who suffered a while, you will be perfected, completed. You will be established, you will be strengthened, you'll be stronger. So for our faith to be complete, two things are necessary. The obedience of faith and patience. After we have gone through the sufferings in our life. But that's not all we need to be complete. The verse Titus read for you is Matthew chapter 22, 37 through 40. Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and prophets. All right. If you want to be complete, the only way you can be complete in your relationship with God is to come to God through Jesus Christ. The only way you can come to Jesus Christ it's through the word of God coming to the point of having faith and then knowing the will of God and by that faith obeying his will and letting your faith get to the point of being patient and long-suffering and not giving up because of the suffering. But what is it the commands of God are trying to teach us how to do? Love. There it is. God is trying to teach us how to love him and how to love our brethren, and love our neighbor, and even our enemy. The purpose of the commandments are love from a pure heart, a good conscience, and sincere faith. That's what God's trying to teach us. And so for us to be complete, 
We've got to get to the point to where our faith obeying the will of God is teaching us how to love God and love our neighbor. Look at this with me now. Let's go further. 1 John chapter 2, verse 5. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. Look at the same verse this time from the NIV. I'm only using this to make one point. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know that we are in him. All I want you to see the fourth or fifth or sixth time that being perfect in him is the same thing as being complete in him. It's just different words saying the same thing. But for us to be complete in him, you remember that? Well, that's how we open up, in him, in Christ. For us to be complete in him and perfect in him, when we're keeping his word, what it's going to lead to is love. Learning to love God, learning to love people. Same concept, 1 John chapter 4, verse 12. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. There's the same concept again, isn't it? And so love one another. You love one another, God's abiding in you. And your love now has been com completed your love has been perfected. Share the same verse, NIV. No one has ever seen God, but we love one another. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love has been made complete in us. For the ninth or tenth time, perfect, complete, same concept. So we want our love to be complete. For our love to be complete, we need to love one another. And then finally... We need to love God. I want you to notice how this text begins. We have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Okay, I want you to see how the text opens. The text opens with, we have known and believe the love that God has for us. We've got to stop right there and camp here for a while. Do you know and believe the love that God has for you? How does God show his love to you? He gave his son to die on the cross at Calvary for you because he loves you. And he didn't want you or me to go to hell. We just took the Lord's Supper, focusing on the body of the Christ that was beaten, that was scourged, that was crucified for us so that we wouldn't go to hell. Focusing on the blood of the Christ was shed so our sins could be forgiven, so we wouldn't go to hell. What was driving God and driving Jesus and all this that they did for us? Their great love for us. Learn to know and believe the love that God has for you because you will never have a complete love until you know and believe the love that God has for you. Because you see that it is through this that we get to where God is wanting us to be. To where we love him with all of our heart, soul, and mind and love our neighbor as ourself. And when we get to the point where we love God with our heart, soul, and mind and love our neighbor as ourself, then and only then are we complete. Do you see that now? Something's missing. Something's lacking. What's missing? If you ain't got Jesus, you ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. And you're going to die in your sin, and you're going to go to hell. What's missing in people's lives is God. And the way to get to God is through Jesus Christ. And the way to get to Jesus Christ it's through his word that produces faith in who he is. And through God's word that produces a knowledge of his will. And his will is for us to learn how to love people and love him. And then when we go through the trials in life, we still got our faith. And we're not going to let anyone or anything cause us to stop trusting in our God. And stop doing his will. And stop learning to love people. And stop learning to love God. To the contrary, we're going to keep doing his will. We're going to keep loving people, and we're going to keep loving God. So let's close this out now, the text here. There is no fear in love, 
But perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. All right. Keep verse 18 in its context. How does the text open here in verse 16? We have known and believed the love that God has for us. And then in the closing part here, it talks about perfect, perfect love cast out fear. Perfect love is complete love to where there's love from God, which is always perfect on his side. And then when there's love from me, now the relationship is complete. And because I know God loves me and I love God and I'm keeping his commandments by faith, in the end, I will be with God. You see how that works? And so I don't need to be afraid because I know God loves me and I've been obeying his word and I know and believe he loves me. And so I'm going to keep his word by faith. And in the end, the one whom I love and who loves me, we will be together. We love him because he first loved us. That's why you have to know and believe the love that God has for you. Because if you don't know it and you don't believe it, you'll never be complete. Become complete. Let your faith be complete faith that's obedient. Let your faith be complete faith that's patient, that keeps on keeping on, that endures, that doesn't go away just because life gets tough. Life is difficult. Life is tough. You are going to suffer. Hold on to your faith of the suffering on the other side of it. You'll be established. You'll be strengthened. You'll be complete. And as you obey his word by faith and God is working through you, you're going to learn to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And you're going to learn to love your neighbors yourself. And when you finally get to that point, you're complete. And with that kind of relationship with God, in the end, you'll be with him. I thank you for your kind attention. If there's anybody here this morning who's not in Christ yet, you're not complete. <laughs> the biggest thing in your existence is missing. And you're never going to be complete until you're in Christ. And the way you get in Christ is by obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. It starts off with faith and it ends with faith. From faith to faith, all the way from the beginning to the very end. It's all about faith. Who do you believe Jesus is? Everybody here who believes he's the Christ, the Son of God, the way we got there is through the Word of God. If you believe he's the Christ, the Son of God, be willing to openly confess that faith and then motivated by your faith, make the commitment of repentance and then obey the gospel of Jesus Christ and be baptized into Christ. That's how you get in Christ. And once you've obeyed the gospel, live by faith. Live by faith all the way to the close of your life. Work at completing your faith with nothing lacking to where you're obeying the will of God by faith from day to day. And when you go through trials, you continue to trust and obey by faith day to day. And you obey by faith all the way to the close of your life. If you're in the Lord already and there's sin between you and your God, that sin needs to be dealt with. Take it to your God, confess it to him and turn from it. We'll pray for you, we'll pray with you, we'll do the best we can to encourage you and strengthen you. If you are subject to the gospel call in any way, let us know while we stand and sing the song that has been selected.